All right, so Black White Angels. We've played, we've played some iterations of this in the past. The ones I've played have a lot of two drop creatures in it. This build is going bigger up the curve with a bunch of Angel of Graces and things of that nature. I played here, History of Benali in the builds that I've played. I just made a couple of small changes. Honestly, maybe I just want a twenty, a twenty-six land in this deck. Even like there's so, there's so many fours and fives in this deck that I think not having enough lands is gonna bite us a lot of the time. I think I think I want at least one more land of the deck. I'm gonna cut a Shalai and add another Memorial to Folly, or an Untapped land, one of the two. Yeah, I just, basically, if this deck, if this deck doesn't hit four, five lands on curve, or at the very least four, it's probably going to die most of the time. Hey, Ristit, thanks for the five months, I appreciate it, welcome back. Cry versus Golden Demise, yeah, Cry's probably better. When the, when the exile is important, it's like really important. Someone asked if they thought, if I thought we should have separate ban lists for best of one and best of three. Yeah, I think that's probably a good suggestion. Had a brutal game. I had to make the Gates deck draw out with my expert control because I managed to kill all my win cuts. The Gates deck decks itself a fairly often amount, to be fair. Not having white white for the angel on three feels bad, but I think I'm supposed to leave up moment of craving here so I can kill an explorer creature. It's the strongest deck you've played with the new expansion since release. Yeah, you know, my pick might be, might be the Jund Whirler deck. It's either Jund Whirler or the other iteration of Black White Angels that's on my website. We're still getting a feel for this one, so maybe this one's great too. But the build that's on my website, I really, really like. It's a little bit more trim than this. Binge watching your YouTube content all week. Enjoy your content and personality. Well, thank you, the even one, for keeping me around. I appreciate that. Thanks for keeping me employed here. Remember, remember when we added a 26 land? Pepperidge Farm remembers. No Alright, well, if we find a land next turn, an untapped land, we get to continue to play Magic. Yay! Playing Magic is fun! Yay! Playing Magic! It's even a white source, too? Look at that. Didn't, didn't just draw a swamp and die. That's fantastic. I did I did a verbal disclaimer at the start of the video, Rod. I had I posted a verbal disclaimer. Okay. That being said, so like I talked about this build being a little bit clunkier because it's bigger. Playing ritual soot with a bunch of four and five mana angels is kind of sweet, right? Now, I think if they had Vivian number two, they would have played her last turn. Cries at her splendid angel. All right, well, this is this is definitely a Kaya's wrath turn, right? The fact, the fact that Ritual Soot kills large Krasis is, like, really good as well, right? Jeff made me get Chipotle today if you're listening, Chipotle. God bless. I do, I do what I can. I'm a man of the people. Everybody, everybody should have Chipotle most days. Chipotle, Chipotle is delicious. Find Vomit. And this is, and this is the tough part of, like, trying to out-mid-range this deck, right? 
Like, they just, they mid-range so hard. Just so many two-for-ones. I would like to eat your 3-2. Moe's has to give you chips and salsa for free because otherwise you would never pay for their food. Just, just saying. Just putting it, putting it out there. Yeah, all of all of the angel animations are pretty awesome. If, man, if we get to if we get to connect with both of these, it's gonna be a party next turn. That being said, someone said cries in cries in resplendent angel earlier. Like this is this is awkward, right? Like I have this ritual of soot in my hand that's effectively a dead card here. So they attacked with the chupacabra there because they wanted to be able to return chupacabra from their graveyard to their hand. I didn't block because I don't want them to be able to memorial it. Can they get removal spell then die. They don't have a removal spell here. Ding. All right. All right. X is eight. It's a big boy. It's a big boy. We did need to dodge finality. Can I put my 3k bits from this week towards end razor L's? Definitely Beetle. 10, 10 out of 10. That is not the Doom Blade I wanted for Christmas, chat. It was not the Doom Blade I wanted for Christmas. So I'm gonna pick Lyra back up here. And then Lyra's gonna make these five fives. And then I'm gonna go ahead and attack with these two five fives. Actually, I just put them to two, right? I 10 out of 10 just put them to two. And then like I make another five five. Like they, they block here, they take 14. Yeah, smash. And like, now they need a removal spell plus a finality, right? Because like, Lyra is a 5-5, five, five, making these other tokens a 5-5. Five, five. And like, they need to kill a Resplendent Angel, so I make one less 5-5 five, five here. So they need to be able to kill Lyra. The fact that they're blocking Resplendent Angel and not gaining one more implies that they can't clean up the board next turn. But like, they should probably block the one that's just dealing more damage. Because if they don't sweep the board, this game is over. So they need a way to deal with my resplendent angels and my and my other things they need to if, ideally they would need to be able to kill lyra and cast finality this turn and if they can't do both of those things they're going to be in trouble and if they do do both of those things i have ritual soot to reset the board afterwards they're up on cards but we might be able to sneak back the last three points of damage especially with angel of grace i have a, I have a memorial to pick that back up all right well there you go so there's the there's step one do you have step two yep the final countdown. Did it do do? Did it do do? Did it do do? Did it do 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 Sometimes they have all the things, chat. It's fine. We're still chipping a chair, chat. Chipping a chair. So I mean, it's kind of good. They have they have a memorial to Folly sitting here, right? So like, it's like good like there's there's the crisis guess who's back back again crisis back tell a friend guess who's back do 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 yeah i think i think i'm supposed to pick clear back up i think i'm supposed to pick clear back up and like i really feel like if the sweepers oh alir is exiled I really feel like if the sweepers aren't helping us win games like this, 
why why are they good right like these are the types of games the sweeper should be helping us slam dunk and they're really not dunking here black white angel splashing creases whoa So the good news is, next turn I can activate Resplendent Angel, attack with it, and then craving the Krasis so it can't kill my thing. So if they don't have a cast down here, we could be okay. They don't. If they don't have explicitly a cast down or a trophy, I guess they could have a contempt too. Yeah. If they don't, if they don't have a two mana removal spell here, we're gonna. Yes, yeah, we. All right. So we are. We are still in this game somehow. Is that lethal? No, that's short. I, I'm one mana short of lethal, right? Because if I hit this, this takes six to activate. Yeah. Gaff to block. It's not optional. I wonder if killing their thing is bad there because it lets them find it back. But I guess if they're finding... Wow, I cannot... Someone call the police because there, there's been a robbery, chat. I... <laughs> wow. Wow, that... Um, well, okay, you know. Not, I'm not going to complain. Just going to quietly pick my cards up and move along to the next one here. Really feel like we stole that one. You played your outs, yep. Like hope, hope they just had a bunch of a bunch of not stuff. We get to board into Kotli here. We get to bring in Argyle's blood fast. I'm gonna trim the Kaya's wrath, I think, because I don't want to kill my angels most of the time. What are my other trims here? I need three more cuts. Excellent binding's good, even though they can kill it because getting rid of their crisis is nice. Am I just not supposed to have ritual assault in my deck? I wonder if ritual assault is the cut. I think Black White Angels in general is probably the best Resplendent Angel deck, but I don't know how I feel about this specific build just yet. I could go down an Angel of Grace. I don't know. Does it leave me with enough threats? I don't think I can cut maps in this matchup. This deck would love Optixilis. You're not wrong. <sighs> Consecrate Consume is like okay in this matchup, but I think I'd rather just have Ritual Asut. I don't think I have room for both of those. You played me Mono Blue since the Legion came out. I haven't played straight Mono Blue, but we did play Blue Splash, excuse me, Splash White. Caleb Durward has played a bunch of Mono Blue since it came out. He streams a good bit. Alright, this real decks have curves, chat. Real real decks have curves. The fact that I'm boarding into Kotli on our guard kinda makes ritual of soot worse though, right? Wonder if wonder if that's a reason to not do it. Nice two one. Nope. How how would you like your big old cup of nope? Do, 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 do. 
great. Well, next turn we're gonna add a lot of power to the table. They, they're scared of the resplendent angel chat. We put, we put the fear in them. We put, we put the fear in them. Hmm. Do I shalai into Lyra or do I just jam Lyra? I think I probably shalai into Lyra. Hmm, I could have Vigilant Seraph. That's true, I'd have saved myself some damage here. I'd be, I'd be like five higher right now if I'd have, I'd have played my lands differently. Next turn, I can activate Memorial to Folly and pick Resplendent Angel back up and make a thing. We're like getting ourselves to a point where we don't really care about Fidelity, which is great. Alright, so 20 point life swing, make a 5-5 five, five token. No big no big deal. NB NBD chat. This is all I've got. You got me, Yugi boy. Good 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 mana is good. This game this game was real gross. For for sure. Do 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 how are you doing, folks? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning, good afternoon, good night to everybody wherever around the world. Thanks for hanging out here today. My name is Jeff Holgood. I'm a full-time streamer and content producer here on Twitch. I'm here playing Magic 30, 40, 50 hours a week. If you are someone who enjoys standard best of three constructing, this is definitely the channel for you. We play a ton of decks here, and I usually change decks every 60 to 90 minutes. There's a lot of variety. Um, as always, a shout-out to all my wonderful subs. I wouldn't be here day and day without their wonderful support. They are the folks that keep me employed. Best by subscribers, I'd like to mention a few of my wonderful sponsors. Harry's Razors would love to help you get that close, clean shave using code Jeff Hoagland at bit.ly forward slash sugar shave. You can save $5 on your brand new shaving starter kit with them. Remember, chat, just because you like playing the Degenerate decks doesn't mean you need to look like it. Hurley Burley Studio does professional Magic the Gathering altars. They do border extensions and full art replacements. And you head on over to hurleyburleystudio.com. You can use code Jeff10 to save 10% on any of your orders there with them. Cardsphere.com will have to help you turn your cards into other cards directed to other players. There's no haggling, and they just take a 1% fee off the top. And of course, InkedGaming.com would love to help you customize your gaming experience using code JEFF12. You can save 12% on custom playmats, mouse pads, binders, and bags with them. You can upload your own custom artwork or choose from the wide range of custom artwork that they have on their website. We beat Sultai in our first match with this build of Black White Angels, which felt like it was going to be hard, but I really... I, I can't understate the power of flying creatures in this format, whether it's angels or drakes or even just jumping creatures with Hadana's climb. The ability to go literally over a board is very, very powerful and potent in a lot of matchups. Needs another white source, but seems fine. That's true. Mono blue. Mono blue is another deck that's very good because of. It's very good because of flying creatures. All right, what you playing, opponent? Naya stuff, eh? I'm hungry. Crabs for dinner tonight. You guys want to eat some crab? Is there is there anything like? Moment of craving eating a crab? Like that's, that's just like, that's just good flavor right there. Moment of craving, seated by some crab. What's for dinner? Yikes! Lava Coil's brutal. It's Imitation Crab. A 
I'd have crab, but I've said some stupid things on the internet and I'm having crow instead. What's going on, Beetle? Weird. This thing, this thing notably has trample, so we can't jump block that. Things to know. That does put a meaningful angel in my discard pile, though, which turns my memorial to folly on later. Phoenix. Phoenix is a little rough. So, I think at this point, I need to flash an Angel of Grace to eat their Spellbreaker. Five mana Doomblade, go. Well, I, I am, I am the current drama, I am the current drama for the magic community. Skirt to be, we're about to get hit by a tree, aren't we? Oh, good, I'm up over 100 Twitter followers. Any publicity is good publicity chat, never forget. Never, never forget. I live for the drama. Thank you, Time Wizard, I appreciate that. Thanks for keeping me employed here. You're shipping your Bezo bucks this way. Get raided by the FBI. I think, I think you're right. I'm gonna double up here, which feels bad if they have some kind of instant speed way to blow this out, but eh. Maybe I should jump block here, but going a little bit low on my life isn't terrible with Angel of Grace here. Worm is six mana. This is a viewer submitted build of Black White Angel. You can find my preferred build on my website. Yikes. This deck does not activate Shalai. It is playing Shalai. Purely as a, as a 3-4 four for 4 flyer that gives your stuff X proof. You can always find the current deck list that we're playing um, on the screen via the stream decker widget. Usually try to stay pretty organized. You have another lava coil. That's not too big of a deal. So I think I'm actually going to go ahead and take the hit from the Rekindling Phoenix here so that I can reset back next turn. Oh, that's going to have haste, isn't it? Oh, really? No. Okay, sweet. Huh. Well... Based on based on my notifications, I'm not surprised other people's timelines have been crazy. My my uh, my notification I've cleared like 20 plus notifications several times today. Well, the good news is with Dub's Angel of Grace in my bin, we're gonna we've got a little bit of time to stay alive here, which gives us time to draw removal spells. So, looking for Vraska's Contempts, Mortify's a heck of a draw. What's going on, Stu? Thanks for the 20 months. I appreciate it. Welcome back. Yep. Ah, crap. She gives red creatures trample. Targeting Lyra. God bless. Alright, so you're saying... So you're saying there's a chance. Take a chance on me. Do, 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 do. 
Sure. We are we are we are solidly not dead yet. So I think I moved the blockers. I do I do this and go to ten. And then I angel of a moment of craving this. Go down to eight, this dies. And then like hopefully we draw Kaya's Wrath this turn. Mortify. That will that'll also do pig. Chip in a chair, chat, chip in a chair. I'm not dead yet. I'm not I'm not dead yet. So good. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Hi, friend. Yeah, the, the totals on Angel of Grace are weird, for sure. I think I just want to trade off aggressively here. I think top deck situations like this favor us slightly, but I think it's pretty slightly. Hello, Skargan Hellkite changes that. Looking for, looking for another piece of removal here. Obviously. Lyra also works. Team Reclamation was kind of mediocre today. So, it's, I assume they're holding lands. Yeah, so they can activate, hel activate Hellkite twice here. Which means this just buys me a turn. It doesn't actually get me out of the woodwork. So they're going to like deal two and then deal one, deal one. And I'll have two spirits and I could jump block with a spirit. We're not, we're not dead yet. We're not, we're not dead yet. Why did I go to negative three? That's, that's all messed up. Hey, unbanned twin. I think I missed a donation earlier too. No, I caught that one. 
Long live Hoglandia. May it always be free from the tyranny of wizards. Please put these on. I messed up. I messed up. I should have done this on my turn. Because now they get to do it again in response. So I played I played really well up until that last turn. I played I played well up until that last turn. I should have I should have used the angel there on my turn before they untapped, and I could have gotten another turn. I'm aware, I'm aware of the mistake that I made. I don't think I want the sweeper. I want the excellence bindings. Is this a moment of craving out matchup? I think so. Takali does not impact Riot. Riot is a replacement effect as the creature enters the battlefield. I think I want a board like this. I guess I guess Ritual Assoot seems kind of mediocre here too. They have a lot of bigger creatures, so maybe I should trim Ritual Assoot. Could see, could see that being what I'm supposed to do. Leave the moment of craving in, so they help me trade in combat profitably. Yeah, I think I think I'm supposed to cut the ritual assets and leave the moments in. Alright, well, let's draw some lands. Onward, upper, back, and forward. Seems fine. Alright, well, we have a moment of craving here, which is probably good in this matchup. Hitting a land drop is good. If we can if we can survive to get to the five drop angels, we might be okay, because we could do some blocking. Hey, what's going on, Zach? I might be done after this deck. I think I need to sort through a mess of stuff on Twitter. We've got... I'm doing this for about a half hour. Yeah, we'll finish this one up. We'll do another 45 minutes to an hour, and then I'm, I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave Jellyfish Thief for tomorrow. Once upon a time, I played some stuff at Red Raccoon, but I don't really play local or paper magic anymore. Yep. And like, when we don't have things like duresses in our deck, we basically we basically just have to like play through these things, just like jam into their their counter spells. Ritualist, it's a good draw here. What's going on, Sans here? If I appreciate the two months, welcome, welcome, welcome back.
Tapped land so I can play five drops next time. Was it last time I went to an FNM or a pre-release? Gosh, I haven't pre-released it probably two or two more two years or more. Probably more than that. I played an FNM like moderately recently. I don't, I don't know. It's probably probably within the last year I played an FNM, maybe. So I'm gonna go ahead and play the Angel of Grace inside of combat. So this way. This way, when my opponent attacks, if they have a three-mana counter spell, they're going to spend the counter spell then. I'm also going to go ahead and... Hmm. So I'm going to respond to this with Angel of Grace. And the reason why I'm responding here, this is going to let the Merfolk Trickster tap Angel of Grace. But they can't Wizard Retort me right now because Wizard Retort costs two. All right, they have the Essence Capture, but I played around Wizard Retort with my sequencing there. I am super passionate about magic, but I don't play magic for a social experience. I play magic because I enjoy the problem solving that goes into it. And I can get the problem solving aspect of magic that I enjoy without playing it in paper, right? In fact, you can, you can play way more magic digitally than you could ever dream of playing in paper. So like if your only goal for magic is to play a bunch of magic, playing digital is way more efficient. You know, like, and by the end of the day, once I've, like, streamed 30 or 40 or sometimes even 50 hours in a week, I don't, I don't want to play more Paper Magic. Like, you know, if when I want to play Magic, I fire up the stream, basically. I, I know, Evan. Better, it's better, what was it? It's better to do something that people love, that some people love, rather than doing something that everybody likes. Yep. So I'm taking four more here. Hopefully this ritual is what's going to resolve. Do I want to play the Lyra? I might just want to play the Lyra next turn. Hey, Woodpecker Painting. Thanks for the four-month reset. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. They didn't have a choice to put a counter on the Terramander. The the Terramander was their only creature in play for us in Scatter. I guess they could have declined putting a counter down. And up to one target. Yeah, they didn't they didn't have to do it, I guess, but like they're pretty far away from like adapting the Terramander. What on God's green earth does this attack mean? They have like what what on God's green earth does this attack mean? Oh, oh, they messed up. Please put a 1-1 counter on up to one target creature you control. This is, in fact, a May. This is, this is in fact, a May. Up to one. Zero is up to one. Up to one includes zero. All right. All the sweepers and removal. I think I want to rest in this matchup. This card's actually okay because it gets around dive down, I think. What do I want to cut? My blockers are all pretty good. I feel like I want to drag my curve down here. Thanks, Rat. Thanks for dropping in today. So this is probably slow. I need to cut six more cards. Vrasta's Contempt's probably slow and it gets blown out by Dive Down. What, what else do I want here? Shalai blocks nicely is the thing, and she only costs four mana. I mean, Shalai doesn't, her text box doesn't do anything, but like three, four, three, four flying angels, like pretty good. I watch this stream so much, I forget. To, you know, it's funny, I've had a couple of people comment on my YouTube channel, they've just been watching so much content, they're playing less because they're just watching more. Consume targets the player, that doesn't really matter. I guess getting four mana spells, spell pierce, is probably something I want to avoid, except for a sweeper. Yeah, maybe Kaya's isn't good enough. I like that suggestion. Four sweepers is enough.
late night stream after Twitter. No, I'm planning to do I'm planning to do 10 plus hours again tomorrow. So probably not going to do another stream post Twitter. We're gonna we're gonna play for another 45 minutes with angels here, and then we're uh we'll get some sleep tonight. Maybe hang out with the fam for a bit before the kids go to bed. What's the lag time between when the VODs go on YouTube? Depends on depends on how long things take to process. Usually it's about an hour, usually it's about two to three hours. All right, take two. Take two. So, for those that are confused, we we were gonna get to take one curious obsession, and they were gonna put two obsessions on their thing and draw two more cards, and I wasn't gonna be able to kill it with moment of craving. It was it was never gonna be able to kill their thing. I think I'm gonna keep this. Just like cast any spells that we draw. Yeah, by the time I draw Mortify, all their curious obsessions have drawn two plus cards, and I'm just gonna die. Yeah, the modern deck we played this morning was awesome. If you're someone who likes modern, you're definitely gonna want to watch the Teamer Phoenix deck from this morning. My least favorite thing, or I guess, like, people are just, like, really bad at, like, statistical relevance, which is probably why there's so many shuffler truthers out there, right? Just, like, when we watch one game where we, like, we won the, like, we even, we literally even, like, won the first game of the match, and then someone comes in, like, we duress into their nut draw and, like, just die, and it's like, oh, this deck seems real rough. It's like, well, maybe, maybe we just lost to the unbeatable draw on the draw, right? Shuffler, Shuffler truthers are right up there with flat earthers for me. Science, science and math are tough subjects sometimes. Well, the plan of drawing a spell that costs less than five has not quite come to fruition. I've not played the Phoenix Second Legacy. It seems sweet. Why don't my opponents get... I mean, have you ever tried having triple triple curiosity? That'll, that'll probably do it better for you. What are the odds they have no counter spells in their hands yet? The shuffler truther reference is to the people that you see posting things about how the shuffler's out to get them, and it can't possibly, can't possibly be random because they have empirical evidence with tiny sample sizes.
I got mana screwed twice, how dare you? <laughs> uh... My sample sizes are huge. They're great sample sizes. You've never seen sample sizes as great as my sample sizes. Don't, don't belittle my sample sizes. No, that person's been removed for magic because they're a terrible human being who harasses and attacks other human beings. Wax Papers, thank you for the 11 months. I appreciate it. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. All right. Well, I mean, that resolved. So even if they have a way to, like, diddle this to attack through this turn, ooh, Exclusion Mage is pretty rough. That's, that's a beating. It's those, it's all those guys, Modus. I am, I am familiar with the group that you're referring to and it's real bad. Do not, do not set foot in. Uh, this is called Magic the Gathering Arena. It is Magic's new client that is currently in open beta. It went into open beta in October and it's been in development for several years now. Time walk with a Tutu body, yep. Yikes. I don't think that matchup's terrible for us, especially with all of our all of our flying blockers, but definitely a little bit rough there with how things lined up. Got hit by the the old unbeatables in game two when we duress them, and then like game game three just like kept a mediocre hand and then didn't ever drew any spells. I was hoping, like, if we would have hit any spell in between in terms, like, two, three, four, we probably would have been okay, but, like, not having plays till five was just too short. Yeah, I agree. Like, I think we have more than adequate tools to be successful in a matchup like that, but that doesn't mean you're gonna win all the time, right? Yeah, I agree. Mono is a very good deck, right? Like, it's got, it's got play to it, but it also has hands where it just runs people over. It's definitely one of the better decks in the format. All right, sweet. We get a, we get a do-over, chat. I love do-overs. Unless they have a red land. All right, two, two islands probably means, all right, sweet. Yay. And the good Lord said, let there be blockers. And it came to be. I haven't played a ton of mono blue. I just like put a random list up there for easy access. Hey, I like Seraph of the Scales too. Let's go ahead and shoot this. Give Seraph Vigilance, get that sweet animation value in there. How many matches have we played with this? This is our third, I think. But the, the bigger build is interesting. I, I assume this deck, we've played against a lot of aggro, and we played against basically aggro and Sultai so far, and it feels okay in these matchups. Um, if, excuse me, if I had to venture a guess, this deck's probably much worse against things like Control and Nexus, just we don't have things to pressure with early. Johnny Boy, thanks for the $5 tip, I appreciate it. Put the Storage Team Monster also working on some changes here and there to list. Thanks for the support.
Read. Interesting. We're dragging down that one. Okay. Doubling up here. Yep. Deal. I'm not pulling the trigger on Mortify because if they go to use Dive down here, I'm going to win the game on the spot. All right. GG. Dunk. That should just probably be the end of it. It's a really, really bold, really bold play. Could, you could probably argue they're far enough behind that they need to take a risk like that to win. I don't, I don't hate their line there. I think mods have to tell you how many timeouts you've gotten. You, you're currently looking at 14 there. Perfect. They don't have another trickster here. They have another trickster, they might get another turn, but if they don't have another trickster, it's all over. Okie doke. Did that. I trimmed these last time. I trimmed those last time. I trimmed the treasure maps. This seems reasonable. Just like drag my curve down a little bit. Plenty of flying blockers. That game. That game was very different than the last match that we played, right? The Resplendent Angel text box is real busted when it works. It's usually usually grinding out other mid-range decks involve Resplendent Angels coming back again and again and again. Memorial to Folly is real good. All the hands with that many lands look real good. I think I chart a course here just because I would prefer they don't get to gain any velocity with this hand. How long is the requested timeout interactive chance really think he's be awake at work? Timeouts are 10 minutes. 10, 10 minutes long. So I think I go ahead and play, nah, I'm gonna play this. This means I guaranteed can't play Resplendent Angel next turn, but it does mean I can curve Mortify into Sarah for the scales, which is like probably fine. I actually, uh, so a lot of people really like the Dragon Shield mats. I'm not a huge fan of those. They're very similar in quality to, to the regular Dragon Shields. I've had mine for a while and I've been beating on them and they're pretty durable. I guess the Elite 2s I've only been beating on for about a week. But the original Elite Guards, these seem to hold up at least as good, if not better than those. These seem fantastic. I like the taller height too. Their new, their new formula is tall, like the Dragon Shield sleeves are tall. You play Consecrate because it has some flexibility in certain matchups where not only interacting with the graveyard is good and drawing a card, but the consume half is also very reasonable against things like, say, Carnage Tyrant. My problem with the Dragon Shield mats is that I the way the way I pack the sides of the deck aggressively like this when I shuffle, this is just like my preferred shuffling method. I always take the corners and like bend and pop them. The sleeve, the sleeve master himself in chat with TCC. Get a second white source here. Temple of Tilt. Temple of Tilt. Do, 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 do. The, the power level on the mono blue deck is night and day. When you don't have Curious Obsession, it really is. 
Why am I shuffling cards? Because I love the tactile feel of physical magic cards, even if I don't play that often. It's like, it's like a nervous tick in a way. All right, they're one land away from Terramander popping off. So I have the fifth land in my hand anyway, so I'm gonna go ahead and just pick up Sarah for the scales here. Grab that. I can play the land, play the Seraph, and then this pays one to get Death Touch. So I'm actually I'm actually able to play this and block the Terramander, even if they draw a land next turn, which is nice. Yay, flying blockers! Our hand was slow here, but they didn't have a Jin or a Curious Obsession, so we're having having plenty of time to uh, do what we do. Oh, this is this line is interesting. So this line guarantees they can flip it this turn. One wet fart, please. Yeah, if you ever want to see the bowels of the internet while magic themed, that's the subreddit for you. It's really disgusting. All right, so now we've got some extra... God, this, this card is just a nightmare for Mono Blue. I get to play Seraph of the Scales here now. Or, re sorry, Resplendent Angel here. And then next turn I get to activate this attack, gain some life back, and make a wall. Hey, what's going on, Wild Feather? Thanks for the five months. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. All right, that's that's what they need here to possibly be in this game. If they if they can generate some card advantage and find a way to tempo this Resplendent Angel here, they, I might not be able to run away with it. Awesome, Schuler. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Sweet. So, I think even just getting in one hit here is basically the end of this game. Uh, I have no idea. I think I made one thread in the Arena subreddit, and it was pretty... went over pretty well. I don't know. I stopped using Reddit a while ago. I, uh, had, had my buddy take my Reddit account over, so I'd stop being incentivized to post on it. A lot, of, a lot of time wasted there. <laughs> I I haven't even read all of it yet, Warblazer, just bits and pieces, so I'm sure that's going to be a treat tonight. A treat. They could adapt this. Ooh, that's good. All right, so... I'm going to attack with these, and we'll see how they block. I'm just going to... I'm just going to expand my block list, Bob. Second Curious Obsession. All right, we have a game here. They have the Siren Storm Tamer in play, providing blocking here. I might just need to straight up race in the air. The problem is this Terramander is able to block here. So I think this currently costs four, right? So they have one, two, three, four. So if they don't find another land here, I can attack with this. Okay, so they found the land, which is awkward. I could mortify a Curious Obsession. Yeah, that's probably the direction we're heading in. The problem is I can't make any actual attacks here. Ooh, that interface for targeting enchantments is great. Hey, Professor Knox. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Hope your stream went well today. People, people like to send sub gifts when I when I offer to do terrible things for them. These these goose sounds just fart already. Just do it. You could do it, Terramander. 
I think they're confused why they can't Siren Storm Tamer the Mortify. And they can't Siren Storm Tamer the Mortify because I'm targeting the Curious Obsession. They probably, it's not super clear from the other side what the Mortify is targeting. I think they thought I was targeting the Mist Cloak and they were trying to figure out why they couldn't Siren Storm Tamer. Uh, see if this resolves. Huh, really? Okay, so I think I just have to trade here. I want to trade the 4-4 and the 1-1 rather than my 5-4 because I would prefer if they draw another Terramander, I could attack this through. My 4-4 can't attack into a 5-5 Terramander, whereas this can. Look at that. Look at that. So this leaves me the option to attack with this, potentially. Really want to draw a Ritual of Soot here. That would be the best draw on our deck. This is... This is another reason to keep the 5 drop instead of the, uh... Well, that was, that was a good game of magic, you know? Got a, a lot of good back and forth there until we called the kill shot. Here's the secret to calling your shots, Jet. If you, if you always call them, eventually you'll hit. Eh, this magic game is tough. It's a real, it's a real noggin scratcher. This is why you should call your own shots instead of the opponent's. Fair, fair. Okay, yeah, this this game's had a ton of back and forth. I thought the opponent was really off early, and then we've had we've had some good some good hits on both sides. Never a lucky draw when you only run good cards. Nice. Gobble gobble. Yep. It's possible I should have done this during the upkeep. This does, this does, the fact that this went to my bin does give me a gain nine here at some point, basically, right? So, makes the race very hard, considering I still have a five, four in play. They probably need, like, exclusion mage into a counterspell here. It's interesting. This is also the first time we've played Shalai in Black White Angels. I, I honestly kind of feel like if you're looking to hammer specifically the aggro in the mid-range matchups, this build seems pretty good. I'd have to imagine this build is like absolute poop against control and like the Nexus decks, but the matches we're playing so far, these changes seem very reasonable. Correct, Johnny Boy. Yep, just update, update it at the URL. Just make sure you don't change the archetype. I mean, this hand goes two, three, four, five. If we draw some lands, yeah. And honestly, I think this hand really good. This match, if we draw some lands, um, I think even the build of Black White Angels I've played that's a little bit lower to the ground than this one. I think even that build isn't that good against Nexus and, and uh, Control Deck. So, like, maybe it's right to just lean into being good in your good matchups. I can definitely see that being a possibility. Even if we just draw white sources from here on out, we're still pretty good. All right. So that could be, could be worse. Better, better than missing, right? Runaway Steamkin is very scary, but if we curve Angel, Shalai, Lyra, we're in a good spot here. They gotta have burn spells here, right? Yeah. We need to keep hitting here. We can't we can't miss a land drop to oh if we go up to five. If we miss a land drop before five, we're not gonna survive.
Yep. Hey, K. Drakari, thank you very much for the six month resub. I appreciate that. That was, uh, that was a good run. At least they, at least they won't know they need to play around black cards for game two. Moment. I actually really like Takali on guard in this matchup because it just like blocks pretty well. And Cry is okay too. I'm not a big fan of Duress because their hand gets kind of empty kind of quick. <sighs> These maps are probably a little bit slow. Even a couple of contempts for bigger removal. Seems seems fine. Won't bring in the blood moons exactly. Crack out pain. Yeah, Takali Tuk not only blocks reasonably because it's a 1-3 for 2, but it also shuts off Pyromancer and Chain Roller, which is, like, meaningful. All right. Temple of Tilt. Temple of Tilt. Do -do 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 I think I'd mulligan this on the draw, but on the play, I think this is perfectly keepable. If we don't do anything till 3 on the play, it's fine. Some curves. All right, gas it up. Yeah, it'd be really nice if you could hide people from your recommends that you really don't want there. Would be would be ideal. Untapped land here would be great. I think if I hit the untapped land, we just Braska's Contempt this, be super conservative. If we miss on the land, obviously we're going to play the Takatli or possibly whatever we draw. Land, please. Yikes. Yikes. I wonder if this deck just wants... I wonder if this deck just wants Discovery in it. Like, these... And that's the problem with, like, these mid-range decks that are trying to, like, curve out to five, right? Like, you, you, you can't really play enough lands reasonably to, like, curve out to five consistently every game. And Discovery adds a little bit of a smoothing element, which is nice. Small mistake here. Probably, probably should have done that before they played the shock. They missed, uh, missed getting a counter back. Try one more. Let's try one more.
So we beat Sultai last time. There's still a lot of variation in these lists. Like, some people are playing Incubation Druids, some people aren't. Some people are playing Biogenic Ooze. Some people have Thieves of Sanity in their deck. Um, can I afford to tap out here? Or do I need to leave up Braska's Contempt? I guess I can just Contempt next turn. I think I'm supposed to just jam Sarah for the scales here. I mean, it's his chat. If he he can he can do whatever he wants in his chat. If I was scum, I wouldn't want my chat to know either. People people might get people might know the truth. Can't have, can't have people knowing the truth if you're scum. Huh. So do I? I think I just attack for two and then cast Gaia's Wrath. That's a good draw. It's like it's like. Kind of a two for one, right? I think I just consume here because if they start chaining off growth chamber guardians, I'm gonna have a real bad time. I don't think I keep up with that card advantage from my current position. Get the greedy and pass there. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like the reason why I didn't just pass there is because the biogenic ooze encourages them to just dump all of their mana into the ooze every turn. So, like, there's really not a big reason for them to do anything other than activate it. Well, they didn't activate this yet, so I'm just going to go ahead and pass here when they adapt this. I'm in a moment of craving it. Yeah, I think if their plan was to adapt here, they should have just done it on their turn, probably. <laughs> that those are those are good daggers, Doctor Goldhead. Good, good, clean daggers. So lots of Seraph the scale animations. Yep. I always love when people are like, "How do you beat Carnage Tyrant?" And it's like, well, have you considered my friend blocking? The fact, the fact that this card has death touch is so good. I think, I think I, do I want to consume? Yeah, I guess, I guess we just consume. Yeah, I guess that's fair. I'm a hungry boy. I'd like some dino for dinner. That's fair. Gobble, gobble. Game seven, not bad. How much more time? Uh, depends on how long this match takes. This might be the last one. I'm going go on for a little over an hour with this one. Pretty easy trade here, I think. Super far ahead at this point, at least until they draw a jellyfish. Snowy Field, thanks for the six months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me employed here. We get two more games. What's going on, Remicide? Thanks for the match. Well, this is only game one, so we're gonna be playing at least one more game after this. If the if the second game goes quickly, we'll probably probably do one more match. What's the point of attacking before playing out the serum? Eh, it just actually doesn't matter really. One wet fart, please. Running, the black white version of vampires running around 
I was thinking of adding Vanquisher's Banner to pull it off. Is there any other card? We get the same effect, plus one to a type of creature. Uh, Radiant, you mean Radiant Banner? So we're at 35 here and we got a bunch of power in the air, so it seems fine. So, I'm actually not going to block here, because if they have another find, they can find this back and kill my angels. Like, there's no reason to do that. Like, I'm at I'm at 35, so, like, there's really not an incentive for me to block this, this ch Revenant Chupacabra. good cards in the new set between ooze and Sarah for the scales this is the shock lands are all great look at that had the had the the find read find reads coming in hot the buried alive phoenix deck seems sweet they're probably dead here right they're probably dead even without the lyra and with the lyra they are super buried And it's interesting that they've included Growth Chamber Guardian. I wonder if they're not playing Wild Growth Walker in the main. Like something, something's got to give to fit that card in here, right? The fact that we put them to two here is big because it means even if they sweep the board somehow, there if the scale leaves two power behind. Sure. Give some other redraw. I'd be surprised if there's an out in their deck that beats them here. Why give them Vigilance if I don't plan on blocking? Because it can adjust how I don't need the mana for anything else and it could impact their blocks. Although I guess that turn I, I could have used the mana for Mortify, so maybe it's loose. Maybe. Maybe my decision was loose. Loose. I'm going to Craving is kind of mediocre here. I want these. I'm gonna cut Consecrate Consume. Yeah, I might get the treasure map. Yeah, I've heard some people saying that they're playing Mardu Angels to reasonable success. It doesn't seem terrible. Yeah, Best of Free Ranked came out uh, a week ago. Almost a week ago. It was last Thursday, I believe. Do I play other video games? Not really anymore. I used to play a little bit of Overwatch here and there, but since, uh, especially since, like, Arena took off, pretty much all my spare time just goes into, like, doing magic-adjacent stuff. Like, even, even a lot of my spare time outside of, uh, streaming is, like, doing stuff to get ready so the stream can happen. For every, for every hour or so that I'm streaming, there's probably, like, five to 15 minutes work that I'm doing off-stream to, like, have decks together, or responding to emails for the deck queue, stuff like that, etc.
the team of reclamation deck was pretty bad was not was not a huge fan of what it was doing it felt kind of underpowered overall our hand's not amazing here but like if we hit a our hand's probably just dead to a vivian but like i feel like a lot of this deck's hands that aren't, aren't exceptional are probably bad against that yep if we get to curve shalai into lyra and they somehow don't have removal spells we'll just be able to race them very efficiently but if they have any amount of removal here we're probably just dead to rights Okay, that bodes well for our hero. No blocks. All right, untapped land. Untapped land. Survey says. <sighs> so, Seraph is 10 out of 10 trading for something here. And by trading, I mean Zagana is going to be an 8 8, and I'm in a lot of trouble. I guess I'm not in that much trouble because I can mortify her. So if they make this an 8-8 and attack with everything, I go trade, eat, and then I go to two, and then I untap and kill this, and I have a Shalai and two tokens, and then like Angel of Grace could maybe be okay afterwards too. I guess I'm actually going to one, right? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to one on this combat step because this actually has trample. Because all their creatures from the encounters get trample. So thankfully one and zero are different numbers, and I'm gonna have this Lyra and these Angel of Graces to bridge the gap here, hopefully, if I uh if I find a fifth land on time. Alright. I don't think I need to worry about any haste out of them, so let's just go ahead and like get my attack on. So you have an okay starting hand with three lands, but they're all tapped lands. Should that be a mulligan? It depends on the matchup, and it depends on if you're on the play or the draw and what your spells are. So, like in a slower matchup where you expect your where you expect the in a slower matchup where you expect your opponent to not be interacting with you, it's probably fine to keep. Alright, so I think I just play Lyra and attack here, right? No, I'm just gonna Angel of Grace. I'm gonna attack for five, and then I'll be dead to I'm gonna be dead to a deceitful stroke. It's game one and you're afraid of mono red, then yeah, if you're expecting to play against mono red or an aggro deck, you definitely can't keep three tap lands. Angel the the race the race game is strong in Angel of Grace. So if they have a disdainful stroke here, we are dead. Otherwise, they are they are super dead. Gokari Raiders. That's fair, Frags. Yeah, I should probably upkeep it so they can't, uh, so they can't disdainful stroke me. No blocks. Stay at one. I think they'll ever reprint the ability to counter triggers like Void Slime. We have that in this set, even, Crazy Duck. Is that what's that card called? There's the uh the uh the what's it called? The split card that does that. Alright, second angel of grace. This card, this card is kind of this, this card's so nutty. Angel of Grace with Lyra is also like really, really good. Cause like Angel of Grace like lets you go low, and then you're like, alright, here's here's my Lyra, I'll, like gain my health back after you've like step step stabilized a big board. Wow, that actually that actually gets them out of this, right? I boarded out my consumes too, didn't I? Solera, thank you for the four dollar tip. I appreciate it. <laughs> Can I put two dollars towards Curl Monster? Two dollars towards Red Green. Ramp burn to push my rampage deck to Fridays. Thank you, thank you for the, thank you for the tip, Solera.
This card is silly. Alright. Yeah, the, the numbers while Angel of Grace triggers are in play are just silly. They like basically just like go in every direction. Look at that. We didn't end at the rank floor. We played some good decks. Um, I didn't hate what this build was doing. I thought, I thought looking at this that I wasn't going to be super into what was going on, but both the Rituals of Soot and the Kaya's Wrath to an extent were fine. Um, Angel of Grace and Shalai were both like very reasonable in different spots. I think my one comment from playing this build is, is that I think I'd trim the treasure maps and then, like, maybe a, the third Shalai and, like, get some discoveries in here. Maybe you even go down to 25 lands. You've got, like, two maps, a Shalai, and the 26th land to, like, fit a bunch of discoveries in to kind of smooth out your draws because this this deck is a little bit clunky and most of the games we lost involved not being able to make land drops on time. I think if you wanted to have play against everything, you would definitely try and figure out some kind of sideboard plan for the control matchup. But I think it's also possible that you just punt the control matchup with this deck and just focus on beating decks like Sultai and Mono Blue and Mono Red and stuff like that. Uh, at any rate, that's going to be it for you for today, folks. I just rolled past the 10-hour mark live. I'll be back uh, tomorrow to do 10-plus hours. Again, I think I might run a little bit long tomorrow. We'll see who else is streaming and stuff like that. Um, but I'll be on uh, tomorrow and Friday for at least 10 hours as well. So I'll catch you all later on later. As always, shout out to all the subs and resubs. Y'all rock, and I will uh, catch you tomorrow. Remember, if you want to see more of my stuff, you get it on over to my website and my YouTube channel to see more of that. If you missed any of today's decks, they'll be published up on my YouTube channel in about three hours from now. And uh, that's gonna be it's gonna be it. I'm gonna find someone to host here who's also playing Magic on Twitch right now. Hey, Marty, Marty's streaming. Let's host Marty.